in my view, talk radio tends to be one-sided. It also tends to be dwelling in hyperbole. It's explosive. Uh, it, 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 it pushes people to, I think, extreme views without a lot of information. So I think um, there ought to be an opportunity to present the other side. And unfortunately, talk radio is overwhelmingly one way. And that was Senator Dianne Feinstein last year on Fox, and not hyperbole and no information. It's a wonder why conservatives have dominated talk radio, if it's that horrific. Democrats, of course, are waging a war, a lot of people think, on talk radio. Since the American left maybe can't compete on the airwaves like they're competing in other places, are they looking to the federal government for help? To discuss what may be the reemergence of the Fairness Doctrine, I'm joined in studio by Jennifer Palmieri with the Center for American Progress and Indiana Congressman Mike Pence. Jennifer and Congressman, great to have you both on. Thanks, Laura. Thanks, um, Laura. Jen Jennifer, let's let's start with you. you know, and we're we're old friends, and you know, I've used to I broadcast you, my show from your building. I mean, how bad can it be out there for you? Um, well, that is how bad it is, Laura. We yeah. have you broadcasting well, from our studio. Oh, great. <laughs> so, so you, you let me your studio for a week a while back. But look, liberals dominate so many areas of American culture and politics. They dominate like universities, the entertainment industry, dominate the most of the newsrooms and television, most of the newsrooms in the print media, mm -hmm. and we have this little place called talk radio where conservatives have done really well. I mean, really well, led by Rush, Hannity, sure. and so many others who are doing a great job. Right. Uh, why do the liberals need a federal, essentially affirmative action program in the form of the Fairness Doctrine to compete? Well, what we did was we went back and looked to say, okay, so, you know, how bad is it in terms of, you know, from our perspective? And it is 91% of the show, talk radio shows on, uh, on the radio are conservative news shows. Uh, so, you know. Progressives have nine percent, and to see why that is, and you know, actually, you know, the fairness doctrine is not something that we get into, but we do see. Well, you're clearly for it in this, and that report. I read the report from cover to cover. I covered it on my show. Right. You guys are basically advocating on behalf of the fairness doctrine. You're saying that it's that, not diverse well, enough out not there on the airwaves. There, there are ownership rules that make that no. help with that, but I mean, the real, right. but the real problem yeah. is that you guys are losing. That's the real problem. The real problem is that we're not very good at it. I mean, the real, you know, right. that's the real. That's problem. the real problem is you guys aren't entertaining. You have a lot of. Yeah, hosting have, shows like Al Franken and, and that doesn't work. It's a different, it's a very different medium. And, right. and there are progressives that are starting to have success, like Eric Schultz. Well, Stephanie Miller, Eric my Schultz friend. Schultz. Schultz. Stephanie right. Schultz is a good guy. and you know, We don't agree on else. anything. But my point is, we have liberals on our shows. I invite liberals all the time. Right. I, I bend over backwards to get liberal guests. And they come on, and it's a great, great segment. I right. think it's already happening in the free market. I don't think we need the federal government. Let's get Mike Pence into this. Congressman, I know the Broadcaster Freedom Act is something that you're pushing. What's the problem here? You guys can't get all the GOP to sign on to this, uh, this attempt by yours to stop the Fairness Doctrine from rearing its ugly head? Well, Laura, we've been, we've been going after it because, uh, you know, with, with uh, respect to your guests and the Center for American Progress, you know, some of the most powerful Democrats in Washington, D.C. have been calling for a restoration of, of this outright government regulation of the airwaves of America. You, you quoted Dianne Feinstein at the top of the segment. Uh, John Kerry, Dick Durbin, and others, as well as the Democratic leadership in the House, who all categorically last summer opposed our effort to pass even a one-year moratorium on reimposing the Fairness Doctrine. So, yes, we introduced the Broadcaster Freedom Act uh, a year ago. So far, Democrat leadership has blocked any consideration of that bill. So, we introduced a discharge petition for broadcast freedom. Virtually every Republican in the House of Representatives has signed that petition to give us an up or down vote on preserving broadcast freedom and to this yeah. very hour not one single Democrat in Congress what? has signed a petition to give oh, us an up on. or down vote no, no, on no, broadcast okay. freedom. Okay, what I don't understand well, I about this, say, Jennifer, is, yes. that, is that Democrats, well, they were the party of free speech and, and mm -hmm. you know, of diversity of viewpoints for sure, right. but we have a diversity well, of the, viewpoints the out there. But the broadcasters that they're protecting are, are the big national broadcasters. I mean, there's, you know, there's been like, you don't hear, you know, you hear Britney Spears on every station. You don't yeah. hear local music anymore, and that's but, part but of this the thing. People kind of, I don't like Britney Spears, all, but somebody con, likes her, obviously. But so the point is, is that it's consolidated among a, small, among a small amount of radio station owners, and what we're, right. I mean, we're for diversity. But they're all for it's making important. money, right? But if Laura, they could put Laura, on what, programs no, that made that, money, they'd be putting like them on. The fundamental problem Laura, is what you're hearing here. If, if Democrats yeah. are really great at it, they would, they, 
you know, Clear Channel will I pick them up. I can't believe, Jennifer, you guys are have hope and change and turning the page, and you guys can't compete in talk radio, and you want the government yeah, to you protect gotta be, you. you got to be funny. Uh, uh, all right. Well, the more yeah, I'm with the dooming loan you guys are selling. Uh, go, I'm just teasing you. Mike, go ahead. Yeah, Laura, what, I mean, what you're hearing here, and, and it, you know, Jennifer, I think, is obviously a very sincere person, but candidly, her boss, John Podesta, the folks at the Center for American Progress, which are a lot of Clinton administration leftovers, and, and, and again, Dianne Feinstein, Dick Durbin, John Kerry, are all advocating that Washington, D.C. return to, to picking winners and losers and deciding what the American people should hear or not here. The Reagan administration did away with the Fairness Doctrine in 1987. Talk radio exploded as a result. Uh, there were there it exploded by a factor of yeah. ten because the American people love this medium. They love the debate left, right, and center. And and we thinks in Washington and people with power in Washington D.C. should be rejecting any effort to return the so-called you know fairness doctrine to the law of the land. You know what I'm afraid of is this uh, idea of a bureaucrat in some windowless office over right. at the FCC going, okay, Laura Ingram was on that station, so we've got to force you know Joe Schmo leftist uh, Ron right after. Then let's. I mean, we don't want bureaucrats turning into programmers on the radio, television. I say more right. speech is which, better. Which the is liberals what can for compete. We're out of time. Yeah, liber uh, if liberals can compete, they're going to do really well. They're, they're doing well in the entertainment industry, all these other areas. You don't need affirmative action, Jennifer. You're too smart for that. Jennifer Palmieri, Center for American Progress, Congressman Mike Pence. Thanks a lot for joining us. Thank you, Laura.